Welcome to Tip Top, growing up your business with Metronomics. We'll be talking to business thought leaders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and business team coaches who have all taken the journey to grow up their businesses to their tip top. We'll be sharing strategies, systems, and stories on how you can grow up your company at the speed you want. If you're searching for your path to the tip top and feel your time is running out, then this podcast is for you. I am your host, Jed Roberts. Today, we're talking to Keith Upkeys. Keith is a certified metronomics coach who I first met at a Scaling Up conference in the US in 2016. Welcome, Keith. Good to have you here today. Yeah, thanks, Jed. Appreciate you inviting me on. Looking forward to the conversation. Well, I'm looking forward to today. This is, uh, this is one of my favorite topics, and it's probably one of your favorite topics, so uh, I'm sure we're going to have a, have a good chat. Yeah, we sure will, because I love this topic. I was excited when you mentioned it. Today's podcast is all about the key function flow map, one of the key tools in the metronomics compound grow system. But before we dive deep, why don't, why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about yourself and your journey to becoming a metronomics coach? Thanks, Jed. Yeah, my journey started oh, about 20 years ago or so. Um, I was actually um, I was a CFO, and I had a consulting business where I was a fractional CFO, essentially hiring myself out to small companies uh, to help with their financial reporting. And I ran into a guy uh, in Portland, Oregon named Keith Cup. And Keith Cup was leading an organization called Gazelles. It was a coaching firm um, that, based on the Rockefeller Habits, uh, the book by Vern Harnish. And Keith invited me to a workshop that he was putting on in Portland. He thought if I came, looked at the uh, Gazelles tools, it might help my business that I was struggling to grow um, at that point in time. Went to the workshop fell in love with the tools, started using the tools in my business, and wouldn't you know it, things started to work a lot better. Fast forward about six months, I decided to hire Keith Cup as my coach, and so he came in and began to coach me and my team, and it was amazing the transformation that happened in the organization, you know, once I started using uh, the Gazelle system and uh, using the Gazelle's coach, um, Keith Cup in Portland. So we continued to use the system, and over time, Gazelles became scaling up, and I was using the scaling up system to actually run my organization. And Keith came to me one day, and he said, why don't you come with me to a, a coaching conference in Dallas, Texas, because I think you'd get a lot out of it. And so I went to the coaching conference, and I was there for three days, and after day one, I stopped Keith Cup in the in the hallway in the hotel and says, I want to become a, a scaling up coach. He says, I know that. And I said, how did you know that? He goes, well, I just knew that that was the next evolution for your business, and I knew you'd be an amazing coach. And so that was where my journey started. I was a scaling up coach, which is where I met you, Jed. And then, um, you know, Shannon Susco, our friend up in Whistler, BC, she released a book called Three Hag Way, which was the predecessor to Metronomics. And once I started using the Three Hag Way um, with my clients, I started to realize the amazing results that I was getting. And so as soon as she opened up the, uh, you know, the organization, uh, Metronome United, and started bringing coaches in, I was one of the first to join. I jumped at the chance. And so I've been a, sco a coach for about 19 years now, and the last five, um, a metronomics coach. I did actually know that you were a CFO in your previous uh, life. Yeah, I'm a recovered CFO. And if recovered I ever have CFO. to do, yeah, if I ever have to build another Excel spreadsheet, it'll be the end of me. Okay. Well, I, I think there's a few coaches in our community that feel exactly the same way. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I, I remember them, well, the, the the 2018 conference um, in New Orleans when uh, Shannon had just released the Three Hag Way, which was really, that conference was the, the catalyst for the start of the coaching community, wasn't it? No. it? It was very much so right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Key function flow map. So let's dive in. So the key function flow map, which we also call a lot of the time the KFFM is a sim simple tool, but a very powerful one. And sometimes its power isn't really understood when you first come across it. So, so to set the scene for those uh, looking into the podcast, the key function flow map is a tool that shows you how you make money. So how you get money into your bank account. So up on screen now, there's this picture of a simple KFFM. You can see four functions at the top. So we have marketing, we have sales, we have operations, uh, we have finance uh, and the, the tool really shows you what goes through each of these functions that ultimately result in getting money into your bank account. Now, there's a few other things here. Each of the functions has who is accountable uh, and going in and out of each of the function are indicators or the metrics of the things that we want to measure that tell us how well those functions are operating. 
as well as that, there's a status, status indicator on each of the functions. So red, amber, green, or red, yellow, green, depending on which traffic light system you use in your part of, uh, part of the world. KFFM is a tool that's unique to the Metronomics growth system. Keith, when did you first come across it and what was your initial reaction? Probably when you were, when you first started reading the Three Hag Way. Yeah, it was when I first started reading the Three Hag Way and I read around the KFFM and I thought that's a really interesting way of looking at a business because I'd never looked at a business that way before and I didn't even look at my coaching business uh, that way before. You know, I actually went up to uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Shannon was doing a public workshop and she invited coaches to come up to that if, if they wanted to. And in that workshop, I actually used the KFFM and mapped my business, my coaching practice. And that's where I first fell in love with it because it actually helped me see my little old coaching business in a whole new way. And I'd never looked at the business that way before. And it made so much sense how everything was interconnected. And it's really, it really is, you know, the foundation for any business, really, any business system, especially if you're going to use a metronomic system, the, the, you know, the KFFM really is the foundation that sits at the bottom of all of it. It's a very, very powerful. And we often use the term is the KFFM is the foundation of everything. Yes, it is for sure. Mm -hmm. I've, I've often puzzled why no one else has come up with this concept because it is groundbreaking, but it is unique to metronomics, which, um, which is something that is, a you know, is a real differentiator for us. So how do you introduce the tool to your coaching clients? So it, do, do you introduce it early on in the engagement? Yeah, I always introduce the key function flow map or the KFFM as we call it at the very first meeting with any brand new client. You know, we, when we meet a new client and we start them on the metronomics journey, we lead them through something that we call the two-day kickoff uh, session. And in that two-day kickoff, very early in the session, probably mid to late morning in the first day, we actually take them through the KFFM exercise. And the way I set it up, Jed, is I tell them that every business team needs a scorecard and a scoreboard. And that's really what the KFFM, it's the scoreboard on how your business is operating internally. And what's amazing to me is when I take a brand new client through the KFFM exercise uh, for the first time, they're just in awe because they've never seen their business in this way before. And they've never really understood how things were connected. And there's just time and time and time again when I work with a brand new client and they step back and they look at that at the end of the exercise and people are just like, wow, now I understand you know, how business actually flows through this organization and understand the interconnectivity of these different functions. It's, it's really one of the most powerful things I've ever experienced. Yeah, I, I, I've had comments like on day one of the kickoff at 11 o'clock, so we're two hours into the session, and, I, and I've had leadership team members say to me, I've learned more about my business in the last 30 minutes than I have done in the last three years. Yeah, and exactly. And the CEO said, you know, he said, Jed, if we stopped right now, I think we'd have got value out of the um, engagement so far. I kicked a client off last, uh, I think it was last July, July of 2023. And this was an engineering firm up in Rochester, New York. And we took them through that two-day kickoff planning session. And at the end of that, um, one of the leadership team members came to me and they said, we've been doing strategic planning for years. We've used all kinds of different methods, different systems. We've used coaches, consultants. We've never had anything so valuable and as powerful as this one. And they said it all started yesterday morning about 10 o'clock when you introduced the KFFM. That's where the power began and it just played off the KFFM the rest of the session. They were just completely in awe about it. One of the things I love about it, which no one has really sort of specifically talked about, is the way that there is a slow reveal to the power of the KFFM. You know, you first of all build it out and you introduce it as, you know, how do we get money into our bank account, which, you know, you know everyone thinks they know, but the reality is everyone has a, has a singular view of their role in that chain, but they've never seen the whole chain end to end. So there's a bit of a reveal there. Oh, okay. Yeah, we get it now. You know, this, this thing here tells us what we need to be hitting to achieve this number or this number of dollars in the, in the, in three months time. So, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a reveal there. But then when you start to put the statuses on top, it starts to look a little bit more like a dashboard and you've got the metrics on there. And then one, one, one or two quarters in, I start asking the leadership team to, re to review the KFFM in their monthly and their weekly meetings. Because now they just need to focus on the key metrics, the key numbers 
that are going through the business rather than necessarily the 12 to 15 metrics they've got on there in their metrics list. So it, it's a slow reveal. You start to understand how more complex and how more insightful the KFFM is the more you get into it. So like a lot of the metronomics tools, there's a bit of a slow reveal. We only tell them the initial purpose and then we build on it and then we build on it and then we build on it. And we get to a point where they're pretty much looking at it every day and they know the score. Yeah. You know, I liken it to a fine bottle of wine. It gets better over time. You know, you, you're right. You build the first KFFM and they look at it and they're kind of awestruck by it. But then over time, as they start to use it more and more and more, it's amazing how um, these clients, and particularly the CEOs we work with, Jed, how they become so reliant upon the KFFM. And I liken it to, I describe it this way with a new client a lot, especially a CFO or CEO that I'm trying to get interested in metronomics. You know, the, the KFFM is, the CEO is really the pilot, of, just like a pilot of an airplane. You know, the pilot, they get in the plane, they take off, they get up and they level off and then they take their hands off the controls and they're watching, you know, they're watching their gauges. They're watching for red lights or yellow lights flashing. And the KFFM really is the CEO's dashboard or the controls, if you will, of the of the engine that they're driving, which is like an airplane. And the CEO can actually stand back and watch and see this, the KFFM and see exactly how things are functioning. And they do, like you say, they do, they look at it every single day. Once they get the discipline of updating the metrics and the KFFM every single day, it becomes the go-to place for a CEO to actually see how the business is functioning. So Keith, when, when you're building out a KFFM, Probably the first few functions that go up on the wall, they're, they're normally pretty obvious, but you get to a point where often the conversation goes into, well, what about no, HR? What about people and culture? You know, what, why isn't that up there? Do, do you see that sort of um, conversation going on as you build out the KFFM? I do. I see that a lot, Jed, you know, because we take, you know, we always go to the function chart, which we've already built, and we pick three to five key functions, you know, that how business flows through the organization or how they make money. And where this typically starts is we'll have a room of seven or eight individuals and they'll see the key function flow map, but they won't see their function up there or their name up there. And they start to wonder why. And they'll say things like, well, we can't operate without IT. We can't operate without HR. You know, we can't operate without these other, without engineering. And so what we'll do is we'll tend to build the KFFM, the map of the functions, but down below, the, you know, the, the mapped KFFM will list out the key functions that it takes to run the organization. And then we'll also bring in metrics so we can actually see the stoplights with those two. And so we do see those, those supporting functions you know, below the KFFM on a regular basis. And again, that just, that just becomes more insight for the CEO, becomes more insight for the team. So everybody can see how the business is functioning day in and day out. So I do run into that quite regularly. How do you explain the distinction between what goes into the main flow and what you might put as a important but supporting function? How, how do you draw that distinction in a way that that satisfies the members of the leadership team that might want to have their name up there at the top? Yeah, what I do usually is I tell them, let's talk about how a piece of business, you, how does a piece of business actually flow through the organization? What are the touch points on, say, an order? How did it start and how did it end? And that's where I really get the distinction because we build out that flow and they said, that's exactly how it flows. And I say, okay, well, that's the key important part. But they take some other things to actually make that flow work, to make the system flow properly. And that's where we get the supporting, the supporting functions that come in. And that usually satisfies the team uh, pretty successfully, really, when they see it that way. Yeah. One of, one of the functions that, are, that is that often pressures to have their, their name up there is uh, product development. A and I would normally argue that, well, you know, you could, you could stop product development right now, but you still got a product and your product is still operating and you, you know, you, you don't want to stop your product development right now, but you could, and you would still earn money probably for a good three to six months. And, you know, if you look at some companies, they haven't changed their product in years. So. For me, that would be a supporting function and wouldn't go in the chain because essentially, you know, it's not impacting dollars in the bank day to day. Yes, you want it. Yes, you need it. Yes, it's important. Yes, it's critical, but it's not directly in that chain. 
Yeah. Same thing with uh, innovation or invention, you know, product development, many different ways, uh, evolving the products you have. Same thing. Right. It takes that for a business to thrive, but it doesn't fit into, you know, the day to day flow. So do you see ego coming into place sometimes when we go through this exercise? Oh, I do for sure. I do for sure. Because everybody wants to, they want their name up there. They want to see the flashing light. I do see a lot of ego in there. But what it does, once you map it out and then you get the metrics lined in and you can start to see uh, how the metrics are performing, it t- tends to shut down a lot of that ego, a lot of that conversation because the facts are the facts, right? The numbers are the numbers and they're right there on the board. So it tends to quiet that down to a pretty large degree. Yeah. I talked about, you know, the slow reveal and the many sort of different facets of the key function flow map. This for me is the, probably one of the first points where I'm looking around the room, trying to understand who is humble and who isn't humble, who has hubris. And this is often where it starts coming out. You know, and that can be a bit of a red flag to me and that there might be someone on the leadership team that doesn't necessarily have the humility that we would want to be operating at that sort mm-hmm. of level. Uh, sometimes they get it and they move on and they, they put their ego back in a box, but not yeah. all the time. And that's often time. where right. I, that's, that's when I first see it. That's a, a real yeah. indicator. And at this point, you know, we're, we're 90 minutes into a kickoff. So you're, you're getting that insight really, really early on. Yeah. And it's really important for us as a coach and how to support them, right? Absolutely. But more importantly, the CEO can see it as well. Yeah. And that's part of the, that's part of the value in this for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Mm -hmm. So, so when do you review the KFFM for your coaching clients or, or, you know, or rather when do you want your clients to review the KFFM? Well, like all the metronomic system and all the pieces, we want them to be looking at the metronomic system and using the metronomic software every single day. And so I tell my clients, you know, the KFFM is something that's updated every day because you update your metrics every morning before your daily huddle, and that feeds into the KFFM. And so the KFFM can change on a daily basis. But I tell my clients as a leadership team, I want them to review it every single week in their weekly meeting. I want them to stop, look at the KFFM, and go function by function and just briefly talk about how well it's operating, minimum of weekly. But I have some teams that they actually bring it into their daily huddle and it's just right there so everybody can see it. They may not talk about it to a great degree, but it's right there in front of them. So I want them to review it at least weekly at, the, at a very minimum, for sure. I, I, I do the same from probably about in the second, third quarter, depending on how fast they're moving. Up until then, we're just looking at the metrics. But up from there, it's pretty much use, use the KFFM. That is your scoreboard. Yeah. And I don't know about you, Jed, but in every single quarterly planning session, I actually review the KFFM with the leadership team. And I always ask the question, do we need to edit it, evolve it, or change it in any way? Is it still representative of how business is flowing through the organization right now? And it's amazing that from time to time we do make changes, not wholesale or big changes, but little tweaks in in, in how it's working. Absolutely. And you know, sometimes you can identify a new source of revenue you know, by changing the KFFM. Totally. You know, it's a, you know, it's a very simple business model, really. And it's, it's a business model focused on cash, getting cash in the bank. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. One of the things I find is that when I'm reviewing the statuses on the KFFM, that's often where I get some really, really good conversations with the leadership teams because they're, they're putting them, they're making themselves quite vulnerable. You know, they're saying, well, we were Amber, but really we're, we're red now, we're red now, you know, and that's where you start to see conversations. Okay. What can we do to help? You know, you now you were at your Amber last month, you're red this month. You know, if you're red now, then that's going to be a problem for me down the track in six weeks, two months time. What can we do to get you back to Amber and then back to green? And you start seeing these behaviors in the leadership team that is a lot more supportive. You know, it's, a, it, it, it's behaviors of a team that is becoming more cohesive and less insular. Yeah, I would tell you some of the most, some of the best conversations, some of the most rich conversations we've had in quarterly planning is in fact, when we're talking about the KFFM. We stand up, you know, and the way I do it, I put it up on the wall and I get everybody to stand up and we just have a great conversation, talk about function over function. It becomes the catalyst really to later in the planning session where we set quarterly priorities. Because when it comes time to set quarterly priorities, we go back and I say, remember yesterday morning, we talked about the KFFM. We have some work to do here. We've got some yellows, some ambers and some reds. 
let's go back and talk about, you know, what on the KFFM really needs to be a quarterly priority uh, for the coming quarter. It's some of the the most rich conversations I've ever I've ever had in a planning session. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret, something that happened to me uh, last fall. I was working with a client and we, we always do the KFFM on day one. And we got deep into some strategic issues that we had to solve. And I exhausted the first day and didn't do the KFFM yet. And so the next morning, realizing a lot of work I had yet to do to get a good planning session, I said to myself at breakfast, I'm going to skip the KFFM because this client, they review it every week. They're really good with the KFFM. I think I can overcome it. And as I walked into the room that morning, I just thought again and I said, you know what? I've never skipped the KFFM and I shouldn't right now. And so I walked into that room. I did the KFFM exercise review and I'm so glad I did because we uncovered a bottleneck. And it became the catalyst for some very good quarterly priorities for the quarter. And so, you know, that's something that, you know, I'll never skip uh, as a coach because it's so transformational and, and such a foundational piece for sure. Yeah, you have to trust the process. You do. Even as coaches, we have to trust the process. Even when our intuition mm-hmm. says, they've got it, I don't need to waste time on that. You have to trust the process and use the system the way it's designed and you'll get, you'll get value and great results every single time. Well, one of, one of the things I love about the KFFM is when we get to the point where the leadership team starts to understand the, the, the knock on effects of changes in status of different functions. Uh, I did a session recently where the sales had been, had been amber or red for about six months. Uh, and at that quarterly meeting, it went from amber to green. Uh, and everyone was going, yeah, yeah, you know, awesome, go- awesome job guys. Awesome job. That's uh, uh, so good to see sales in, as green again. And, and we want sales to be green really, you know, not necessarily all the time, but we want it, we want it to be re- pretty green. And I said, oh, hang on a second, hang on, hang on. What happens now? And they looked at their KFFM and they realized that operations was already red. And I said, okay, so sales has gone green. Who has to deal with all of the sales opportunities that are closing over the next three months? So, oh, we do. Operations have to. And you're red already. Yeah. There's no such thing as super red. There is a super green, but there's no such thing as super red. What do you need to do to be able to handle those deals that are coming through from sales? Right. Okay. So the focus completely shifted from one of sort of, you know, celebration to celebration, but celebration, but we now need to work on operations. What do we need to do? And we need to start now because those deals are going to come through and they're going to come through quick and we can't handle them right now. We haven't got the capacity. Yeah. I run into that a lot, uh, Jed, and it's really interesting how that unfolds. Think of it in terms of, you know, on the KFFM and where business usually starts, it's in marketing. And then we've got the sales that follows. And so marketing's job, their, their job is to bring in, you know, uh, cold leads, warm them up to warm leads, and then feed them over to sales so the salespeople can go close a deal and, and sell the product. And I see this a lot where marketing's, you know, red, maybe yellow because they're not bringing in enough leads. Sales is sitting there green and they're begging for more people to talk to. Well, marketing get, puts a lot, we put a lot of emphasis and investment into the marketing side. We get marketing green. So they're delivering the number of leads. In fact, they're bringing an excess number of leads we need. And it takes sales, which was then green at the time, and turns it into red because sales wasn't ready. They weren't ready for the number of leads that were coming through. And so we got one solved, made it green, and downstream we created a problem or a new bottleneck in sales because we didn't have enough salespeople to support the number of leads coming through. And that's so prevalent as it works through the KFM. It's just like you described. It goes into operations. If we build up marketing, we build up sales and we build up operations and we're delivering, you know, 100%, 200%, 300% of what we're delivering. You go around the curve on the KFFM and now you've got a billing problem because you don't have enough support in the finance area of the company to support all the billing needs. Are, and so it just keeps working. And so that's the beautiful thing about the KFFM. And my clients, they said, now that we see how everything's interconnected, we can see where we need to tweak some things so that we have an optimum output all the way around the KFFM. It's really one of the most beautiful views of a business I've ever seen. And I've been doing this for 20 years. I think some people believe that the objective is to get the KFFM to all being green. And it's not because if everything's green, you've probably over-invested in the business. You've probably spent right. too much money and 
uh, someone is going to come along and cut your lunch pretty quickly because they've got a lower cost base. Yeah, that's for, you're absolutely right. And any, any insights from you on the KFFM, just from your, from using it with your clients? Yeah. One of the things I th was thinking about as we were chatting here a few minutes ago with a brand new team, um, it's a brand new, it's a brand new company. They maybe haven't used the system yet and they've never looked at a business this way. But what I love about the KFFM, it helps us, um, first start with who, you know, we talk about this and Jim Collins talks about a lot of this in the work he did in good to great, you know, first who, then what, or, you know, so forth. Well, the KFFM helps us identify what are the key areas of the business that it takes for it to operate effectively. And then the very next step is identifying who is accountable for that function. We haven't talked about how or what or anything yet, but we want to get, what we want to do is get um, clarity around those key functions and then clarity around the accountable owners of those functions. And that's where we can really start to build out this leadership team, you know, this transparent, cohesive, aligned leadership team is by using the KFFM. And then, so I always say, let's start with who, get the KFFM built, and then over time, let's figure out how how we're going to build out those functions, how we're going to make them more effective, how we're going to be more efficient. And what that does too, it also relieves, you know, CEOs are always trying to figure out how do we get more done? Well, the CEO can't do, CEO's got eight hours a day just like the rest of us. And so CEO needs to first figure out who, who can do these things. And then together they all figure out how they're going to get them done. And it's really beautiful in setting that whole system up, you know, to delegate this work down through these because these entrepreneur organizations, it starts with one person that had a great idea, right? And then over time, they have to build out all these who's. And the KFFM is a great way to figure that out, how to build out all those who's. And so I love it. I love it for that reason. And then the other thing I love is just how everybody can see how it's interconnected, like you just described. Because it's just like a spokes on a wheel, right? Everything's interconnected. And you, you got to have one. You can't have, got to have all. You just can't have one, right? You need each other. And you need the connectivity and you need to understand how each other works together. You know, and you, and I don't know if you've mentioned this yet, but it's, it's, you know, it's tying it together with what we call the widgets, you know, that makes the thing really work well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and talking about widgets, uh, do you find that the, the X in the profit per X for the business comes out from the KFFM? Most always it does for sure. Once we get the widgets built, Jed, and I stand back and I asked him, what's the primary widget in all of this? Mm -hmm. And the primary widget, once we get to it, 90% of the time is the profit per X, for sure. Yeah. And where does that pop out for you? Uh, it usually pops out somewhere down in the operational area. Because I asked him, you know, what what is that key piece? What is that key component? It's either going to be closed orders, shipped orders. Um, I had a product, a client that manufactures equipment in China and imports it. And their primary widget is um, containers full of equipment. And that's the, and so now we've, for them, we measure profit per container. And so that's how it pops out usually in that area of the KFFM 90% of the time for sure. Yeah. I often find that it, it, it pops out when, when we, when we're clear on what is coming out of sales. So coming out of sales, going into operations or service delivery, whatever they call that in their business. And, and I think a key, a key thing that we haven't mentioned is I make a big point of using their language. Now, we might use marketing, sales, operations, finance, but if they're using different terms, now I want to use their, their language. I want, it, I want them to own the language rather than use the language that I'm, I'm using. Yeah, and it's the same way when we discover the widgets, right? I want them to use their language. I had a client a number of years ago. Um, they're in the textile business, and so what they do is they support, they, they support the restaurant industry, and so they do cloth napkins, tablecloths, chef smocks, those kind of things. And, you know, when we built out the KFFM, we came from marketing to sales to operations. And I said, well, what's the widget that moves from sales to operations? Is it a, is it a sales order, a signed order? And they go, no, it's a blue folder. Like, what's in the blue folder? They said, oh, a signed order and a specification sheet. But to them, the key widget was the blue folder. And I said, then we're going to use blue folder. Let's use your language because that meant something to them. And so they knew they had to generate, you know, 100 blue folders every Friday. So they had work for next week and that made, that was very transformational and they understood what that meant. And so you're right about use their language for sure. And they're more likely to count something if it's in language that they are used to, the language that they're familiar with. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They'll count it for sure if it's the language that they're familiar with. If we change it to sales order or, you know, warm lead or cold, they wouldn't get that. 
right? But they'll definitely pay attention to it when it's in their language. I totally agree with that. And I'm glad you brought that up. That's really important. So one of the, one of the other overlays I, I often use uh, is, well, two, two, two overlays I often use is um, how long it takes a widget to move through a function, which yeah. overall then gives you how long it takes to start spending money on a potential deal to actually getting money into the bank. So, you know, going back to our scaling up days, now we had the, um, the, the cash conversion cycle, which gave yeah. us an idea of how long it took to get money through the, the business. Uh, and, you know, obviously you want to get that through the business as quickly as possible so that you can start reusing it, reinvesting it back in the business. Uh, so that's something that I often do, particularly in businesses that have very, very long sales cycles or long delivery cycles. Now, because they need to understand that, you know, what they're spending right now isn't actually going to get paid for by a client until nine months, sometimes 12 months, in some cases in clients that are working with government, potentially 18 months time. So they need to be planning their finances around having that very, very long cycle. That's, um, that, that it's hard. It's hard because you've got to fund yeah. that, that effort for a year, 18 months. That's right. And I, I totally agree with you, Jed. And I don't call it the cash conversion cycle anymore. And what I do with my clients in many, many instances is I call it the, the conversion cycle. So I say, let's take a, let's look at the marketing function. You know, what does it take? How many days does it take to go from nothing to warm leads that the salespeople can work with? And we look at that in terms of number of days. And then I ask each function, I give them a homework exercise for the quarter. I said, why don't you go out and figure out what your conversion cycle is for your function and then bring three ideas when we get together next quarter on how you can shrink the goalposts, make them a little closer together. How can we lessen the days in the conversion? And I have them do that for each function. And it's pretty, pretty amazing the, the ideas they'll come back with. Yeah, that's, that's always a bit of a, you know, a, a big win. Oh, yeah. Very, very big win, too. Because what it does, it, it helps them generate cash sooner and faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another overlay I tend to use uh, that I see, or I don't see many other coaches using, is the the, the concept of capacity for the functions. Uh, so, how what is the th what is the theoretical capacity? And this is going back to you know the goal, the theory of constraints. Now, what is the capacity of the function, and what are they running at right now? Because if your function is red and you're running at 120 percent capacity, you're not getting amber anytime soon. You know, you've got some sure. serious investment in systems, processes, and people before you, that's going to change. But if you're red and you're currently running a 50% capacity, then you've probably got some wriggle room. You've got some capacity to work with, you know, it might mean fixing processes or making people work more efficiently or effectively, but you've got some wriggle room there. Uh, so it's the combination of these different overlays that are starting to give you all sorts of different answers to questions that you can answer, uh, you know, and you know, that's. Again, it comes back to the fact that the key function flow map is, is such a powerful tool. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love the look of those two overlays. I can totally see them working together hand in hand. It makes huge value and huge difference for those clients, for sure. Okay. Uh, so for people watching this, you've probably worked out that both Keith and I are real, real fans of the key function flow map. It's one of the, the transformational tools. It's one of the foundational tools and it, and it is the, the foundation of everything within, within metronomics. Uh, Keith, anything, anything else from you, any other insights on, on the model, on the tool? Uh, no, just one thing I wanted to say is, you know, when we work at the, with the three Hagway system, we have both an internal and an external view. And I know Jed's going to talk about the external view, uh, in another podcast, the market map, but, and so it's the combination of the internal view and the internal view really is this key, F, uh, this key function flow map, this KFFM. You have to understand how your business runs on the inside before you can go out and look at the market and figure out how we can support uh, the market on the outside. And so the key function flow map, um, although it looks like an execution tool, it really plays into the strategic side of the business in a big, big way. You really can't do the three hag way system without the KFFM. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, there's other tools out there. If you look at you know, Alex Osterwalder's environment map and his business model canvas and uh, uh, to a to a lesser extent, Michael Porter's Five Forces. Now they're all tools that cover the external and the insta internal. Whereas uh, the key function flow, flow map is definitely internal, and it is about the now. But it also gives you that strategic insight that helps you inform other decisions, other conversations in the business over time. 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. I guess the one other thing I would say, Jed, for those that are listening out there, even if you're a solo entrepreneur, a very small startup, even if you're the only person in the business as an entrepreneur, it's still really important to draw your key function flow map. Even though you're the accountable owner of each of the functions, it's important for you, the entrepreneur, to really understand how business flows through your organization. I always say start now, build it early, and then evolve it over time. And it'll it'll make it so much easier as you begin to scale your organization if you have the key function flow map uh, alive and well in your company, even from the very beginning. And if it's sticky notes on a piece of flip chart paper, that's good enough. That's good enough that, for now. And that, yeah, and that's how I build them the first time with any brand new client. You know, I'm the sticky note guy in the in the room, and I'm putting sticky notes up on the wall on a piece of flip chart paper. And that's always the first evolution of a KFFM. And all my clients, you know, Jed, they save that original KFFM. And I've got CEOs that actually have it in the closet in their office. They said, I'm never going to get rid of that because they, they love it so much. Yeah, get into Metrolome pretty quickly. But the first one, it's just more tactile, isn't it? People can see it yeah. build up. They can see it come together. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay, awesome. Well, I, I've covered what I wanted to cover up today. Anything else from you, Keith? No, that's it. You've done a great job of uh, laying out, you know, the, the foundation, the principles of the KFFM, Jed. And I really appreciate you inviting me on because, as you can tell, just like you, I love talking about the KFFM. I can talk about it all day long. It's one of my favorite things and my favorite exercises, really, with clients, for sure. Well, thanks so much for, for coming on the show, Keith. Uh, great insights and great conversation. And, um, yeah, looking forward to having you on again because you had a few topics you wanted to talk about. So we must start planning um, your session, too, quite soon. Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. I'd love to come on and, and talk uh, about metronomics, everything metronomics. I love it. So just invite me anytime. I'm happy to help, Jed. Look forward to it. All right, Jed. Thanks. Okay. Cheers, Keith. Tip Top is brought to you by Metronomics. To find out more about metronomics and how this 20 plus year old proven system will save you time and money as you grow up your business, visit metronomics.com. That is M E T R O N O M I C S dot com. Also search for Metronomics in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else that great podcasts are found.